It's interesting, the last thing that you said, and I'd like to get into that. I started following your material, I guess about 10 years ago, and I spoke with you frequently, and for a while I was a testimonial. You know, my health, my business, my net worth, everything just went like this. And then a few years ago, one by one, they just started kind of flattening out and then going down a little. It's not bad, but it's not like what it was before, sort of effortless and just flowing. What were the thoughts that I was thinking that made that happen? <laughs> we will help you sort that out. But before we do, we want to remind you that it is always an asking that is the beginning of new desires. And so when you first came into awareness of this conversation about creating your own reality in the way that we are presenting it here you were like most people in that you had many desires that were not feeling to you like they were controllable it's like when you pull the slingshot back 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 the further back you pull it when you let go of it the further your rock goes and so with most of you you had a lot of things bubbling in your vortex that had been bubbling there for a long time that you were not aware of. That's what we were just saying today. You were not aware of them. And once you began applying some of the softening of resistance techniques that we were offering, you became the realizer of more and more and more of them and the allower of more and more and more of them. But it is so helpful that life causes you to keep putting more and more and more things, material basis for creation back into the vortex. And so recently we've been talking, we'll just give a little recap for the benefit of people that may not have heard it. And then we're going to tell you something new that we know you've also heard, but it's important to this conversation. So step one is life causes you to ask. And when you ask, it is given every time. So you ask and it's given, but it's given in this vibrational vortex version that we were talking about, where even though it's been given, you don't know that it's been given. You don't know that it's in there. You don't know that it's been given because you can't yet see it, hear it, taste it and touch it and smell it and so forth. And that's where you were when we first met, not completely, but a lot of things were at that state. Step one and two then ask. Step two is it's given. It becomes a vibrational reality. Step three is, you have to find some way to be a vibrational match to what's in there. So when you do that, then those things begin manifesting into your experience. Lately, we've been talking about step four. Step four is you become a master of what we were talking about here today. Staying in the receptive mode, not letting the condition control the way you feel. Not letting the condition control the way you feel. It's so easy to observe and then to conjure a vibration based upon what you're observing. And that's not mastery because you've done step one and step two. But unless you are able to hold yourself in a good feeling place, Esther has got a call from someone who is overlooking her place in Del Mar. And they said during the storm the other night, a big tree blew over. Didn't cause any damage. It was right where her van that she just bought was sitting. And then Esther thought, hmm, I was going to leave that van right there. And then all of a sudden, one morning, I woke up and I thought, hmm, I think I'll drive that van out to Texas and show it to the kids. So she got up the next morning. She had a few days. She got in the van. She drove it to Texas. And the next day, a big tree fell right where the van was parked. And Esther thought, well, Maybe I am more in the receiving mode than I'm giving myself credit for. Maybe I should start looking for the things, the thousands of things that are going well and not put any emphasis on the things that are maybe not. And maybe I should accept that I am the creator of my own reality. And maybe I should accept that when things don't go the way I want them, that it causes a stronger desire to go into that vortex and it becomes the beginning of more that source and law of attraction are going to bubble into something. So there is more potential desire for me to receive. So that was our long way of saying to you that all of these things that are happening are causing you to put more into that vortex because you can't make magnificent things. We've never said this before. Thank you so much. Things can't come from nothing. They have to come from something. They come from vibrational basis. And that's why you were born into this universe, into this time-space reality. 
with contrasting things to cause you to put more and more and more and more into the vortex so that law of attraction has more and more and more and more that can come together so that you can be the receiver of the new ideas because complacency has never been your style and things going along just perfectly has never been your style you must be reaching for something more that's where the juice is the juice is out on the leading edge not on the complacent edge the juice is out on the exaggerated contrasting edge not out of the ah oh, everything's perfect in my life edge that's when there's no reason to mold anymore you see <laughs> want to talk about something specific actually I think that you've just covered it nicely I will say a couple of things first that a couple of months ago I was whining to a friend and, and I had been doing quite a bit of whining recently and she said why are you even saying this you're an Abraham person what's wrong with you and yeah. she Esther she just, gets that all the time she's not just an Abraham person she's, <laughs> but I will say that my friend was absolutely right and that kind of shook me a little bit and over the last couple of months things have turned around quite a bit to the point where well actually here I'll ask you about this things have been going just swimmingly you know the synchronicities that I had several years ago where I felt like I was just on slaloming down the hill it's like oh good thing coming to me oh another good thing coming to me it's been happening for the last let's say month or two and then yesterday my car got towed in downtown LA and I found it 30 minutes after the tow place had closed and blah 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 and so I had to take advantage of what is actually a fairly decent transit system in LA to my surprise and came back and this morning met some guy at a coffee shop where they gave me a free coffee because I have my car towed and then a fellow that I was talking to gave me a ride to go get the car so it's this strange mix of what did I do to cause the car being towed and then what did I do on the positive side to have people be very well, kind to me you're this like morning everyone you have a mix of vibration but you're mostly in the receptive mode of wonderful things coming but you've been questioning yourself we'll tell you another story about Esther you're gonna like this so a few months ago, Esther twisted her knee, taking a very large suitcase off the conveyor belt, a suitcase that she had loaded piece by piece by piece. It was so big, she had to fly another airline to not be charged extra for the bag. That's <laughs> how big the bag was. So she's been sort of gimpy, limping around, limping around, limping around. And now her knee is feeling wonderful again. And she hasn't been doing much flying or much dragging of bags around for the last month or so. So she had the thought as she was walking through the airport, a thought that at face value sounds like a positive thought. Ooh, I'm so glad that my knee is feeling so good. Well, every subject is really two subjects. There's something on each end of the stick, yes? what is wanted on one end and what's not wanted on the other end and so she's emphasizing sort of trying a little too hard talking about how glad she is that her knee feels good and then without even realizing it we're reminding her and she knows it as we are reminding her she had in the background a thought going on not going to do that with those big old bags again thinking about the big old bags lugging the big old bags dragging the big old bags now she's going to be out here for a while so she brought two big old bags and another bag so she has three bags which is just one bag more than is easy for her but she always believes if I can't haul it myself don't bring it because she doesn't always want somebody else needing to come along with her to help her and they've got their own bags to drag around anyway so can you feel the not all positive things that she's got going on in her mind a sort of reactivating of stuff that she could have left alone she didn't need to justify that she feels glad that her knee is better she could have left it alone but she didn't and so when her new to me suitcase came off the conveyor belt she lifted it off with e or her friend lifted it off with ease and she's hooking everything up and she hooked her smaller bag on it she thinks it's so great the way it piggybacks and she can push one in front and pull the other behind and this was so incredibly heavy she couldn't believe it and her friend said, let me help you with that. She said, no, 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 I got, I got it. I've got it. <laughs> so she's dragging it through the airport a little bit. And then she thought, what is wrong with this suitcase? And she looked and one of the wheels had been broken off in flight. It's a new bag to me, really good suitcase. <laughs> and it's a virtual sled that she's dragging through the airport. <laughs> and she's asking the question that you're asking what thoughts was I thinking well she knows what thoughts she was thinking 
She was remembering that she doesn't want her knee to hurt. She was blaming the suitcase for hurting her knee. And now she's back, here I am to save the day. I'm healthy and I can do this all by myself. Those vibrations, every thought that you think contributes to what's going on in your experience. But when you know it, you see, here's the thing. Oh, if you hear this, you don't ever need to know anything else ever, 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 ever. Oh, oh, we're so excited to tell you this. But before we do, we're going to tell you something else. So don't forget that we're going to tell you this because this is the most important thing that you're ever going to hear from us. We'll just remind you in case we forget, it's about how good thoughts and bad thoughts manifest. So remember that because we want to come back to that because it's the most important thing that you're ever going to hear. So Esther was watching her grandson working on some long division and he really is a good student. He wants to be a good student and he really applies himself and he's kind of excited that he's getting to do a little homework because his big sister has been doing homework and so now he's got some homework. So that means he's big and he's sitting and he's getting frustrated because he can't get his problems right. And so his mother came to Esther. She was spending the night there and said, can you show me how to do this long division thing? Because I want to show Luke and I want to make sure that I remember how to do it. And Esther said, I think I can remember how to do it. And so she did it. And then they checked it on the calculator. Yeah, that must be how to do it. Cause we got the right answer. <laughs> and so then Tracy went up to talk to Luke about it. And Esther can hear his frustration and his consternation and he's trying and he's not getting it right. And then all of them realized he doesn't really know his times tables. Not really. He was sort of guessing at some of them. And so when you're sort of guessing at the timetables, you can't do the long division. And until he gets that, the rest of it is not going to be easy. And Esther laid there in bed that night and she thought, oh man, this is just like understanding law of attraction. This is just like understanding these few basic things. This is just like understanding that law of attraction is responding to us and that our emotions are telling us how we feel. This is just like understanding once a thought occurs, once a thought is recognizable and received, a good feeling thought is going to manifest into a good feeling manifestation. It's the law. And a bad feeling thought is going to manifest into a bad feeling experience. It's the law. But they seem to be happening quicker and quicker with less distance between the thought yes. and the reality. Yes, because you understand that you create your own reality and because there's momentum in every thought that you think. And because the universal forces, things are manifesting more quickly now than they ever had before. There's more current from your inner being about what's going on in your vortex. And there's more current in the mass consciousness about things that are unwanted. So the rich are getting richer faster and the poor are getting poorer faster. And the sick are sicker faster and the well are weller faster. In other words, the crevasse between wanted and unwanted is starkly realized, you see. And then your government says, oh, well, we'll just smooth it all out again. You can start all over again, but you won't because you've got a vibrational position that is steady and will yield to you once you just clean your thoughts up just a little bit. And anyway, what's so wrong? We've been saying to you for years that there are two ways to know what you're doing vibrationally. One is how it feels and one is how it manifests. And the feeling is pre-manifestation and the manifestation is post-manifestation. But what difference does it make if you are becoming a master? Step four, we didn't tell you what step five is. Step five <laughs> is not being mad at yourself for having a step one moment. Step five is realizing that contrast is going to always be part of the process that it's how you clarify and that it doesn't mean that you're not good at what you do and it doesn't mean that you're not worthy it means that you're clarifying it means that you're putting more ingredients in it means that you're making a more robust vortex it means that you're going to have more desires that are coming out of it later it means that you have longevity here in this physical experience when you become complacent we've never said this before but this is a perfect time to say it when you become complacent when you're not feeling any emotion anymore, when you're not contributing any more to your vortex, when you stop putting the ingredients in, in time, you stop being in this physical time space reality. It's all part of your continuation of creating here. So the challenge is essentially just learning how to monitor and master our thoughts and our emotions. Yes, but what's an easier way of saying it? To care how I feel and do something about it when I don't feel so good and catch it at the earlier subtle stages. Mm -hmm.
don't wait until you are livid about something or disappointed beyond measure about something catch it in the earlier stages when it's easier to just step back into the receiving mode